So one of my favorite uses for tilt shift lenses is using the tilt effect to create a miniature look. I've learned quite a few things over several years on how to make that work best. Uh, first of all, your location relative to the subject is really important. You kind of want to be elevated. I would say anywhere between one to three, maybe four stories higher than your subject. Also, I would recommend you shoot a little wider than you think because you want a good sense of place. If you're shooting too tight, it doesn't really quite work as well for me. Try to shoot wide open or maybe one stop closed down so you get a good amount of depth of field, not too much. If you get too much of the field, if you're shooting at f8, f11, or f16, you're going to really minimize the effect and it's not going to work as well. And lastly, make sure you use the magnifying tool in live view. You'll find that the focus is really critical and you want to try and focus on a spot that's actually interesting. You want to lead the eye somewhere. Try to tell a story with this technique. Don't just do it for the sake of doing it. And that way, hopefully I'll get some good results. So we're going to go to a woman rink and see what we get and demonstrate how to do the tilt shift effect with the tilt shift lenses. So when I ran on the scene, I'm going to go ahead and compose the frame just the way I'd want it to. I'm going to try and keep the buildings pretty rectilinear. I'm now going to go ahead and tilt up a little bit. And you'll see that as I do that, the composition changes ever so slightly. And I might want to make a small adjustment. In this case, I'm going to tilt it all the way up. I'm going to go ahead and lock the lens. And I'm going to go ahead and tilt the camera down just a little bit. There you go. Perfect. And now here comes the critical part. You got to pick a nice point that you want to keep in focus. I'm going to punch in. And there we are at 10 times magnification. Remember, we're wide open on the lens. We've got almost no depth of field. And you've got to make a choice. Either you can stay with the little skaters there in the center of the frame, taking their lesson. You can see the coach right there. And that's going to be a nice subject of interest, especially in time lapse. Or you can pick the skaters in the foreground. It's just how critical the focus is. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and pick the little skaters in the center because they're going to be kind of a continuous source of dependable motion. Go ahead and fire a frame off. And there you have it. Uh, in this case, I'm also going to connect uh, a time-lapse trigger from Canon, the TC80N3, uh, into the uh, time-lapse port or the trigger port. And we're going to go ahead and fire a series of frames, one frame every second for about five or ten minutes. And we can get a time-lapse of this shoot. And we can also shoot a little bit of video as well in the regular video mode on the 5D Mark III. This will work with HDSLRs as well as any motion camera, whether it's a C100, C300, C500, any motion camera with an EF lens mount will work with these tilt shift lenses just great. So here we are in Tudor City, looking up 42nd Street, looking west. I'm going to go ahead and use a 90 millimeter tilt shift lens and use the tilt function vertically so I can actually make it look like a miniature effect if you will. I'm going to focus on 2nd Avenue. I'm going to go ahead and tilt my lens up. Recompose a little bit. I'm going to lower the camera slightly. There we go. Make sure that it's aligned dead center. Go ahead and punch in. On my focus, I'm going to focus it right there on 2nd Avenue. You can see the traffic coming through. Punch in real carefully to make sure we're good. You can see it's very critical focus, especially with a 90 millimeter lens. I'm going to pick the middle of the street in this case. I'm going to wait for cross traffic to be going north to south. All right, there's a good composition. I'm going to drag the shutter a little bit lower, get a little more exposure. Look at our histogram again. See, it's pretty healthy. It's spiking a little bit on the right. We're not really losing any detail. Could probably go a little more. Get a little more detail on the shadows without losing too much. And there we go. So here we have an example where we want to shoot two different subjects at two different distances with a long telephoto lens. In this case, it's a 90 millimeter tilt shift lens, 2.8. And we want to focus on the clock as well as the flat iron building. Normally, you'd have to make a choice, either shoot on the foreground or on the background to keep them in focus. You could, of course, stop down, and that would give you more depth of field, but it creates some technical challenges, especially if you're trying this in video. With the tilt shift lens, all you need to do is rotate the lens a few degrees, in this case, three ticks, so that both the uh, clock as well as the flat iron buildings are in focus. It's a great tool to find a way to correct for the optical limitations and depth of field limitations of most lenses. What we have in this situation is a camera 
that is not parallel to the focal plane of your subject. This is an angled plane relative to the sensor. So normally you'd have to shoot in a lot of depth of field, let's say F16 or F22. Sometimes as well you don't have enough light to do that, specifically if you're shooting video. So here's how we pull off the shot. If you go ahead and frame up with a traditional 45, and basically you would pull focus from either the foreground bottle or all the way to the background bottle. This is the traditional problem with depth of field. If I simply go ahead and rotate just about two clicks, you'll see that everything is almost magically in focus all at once. So we have beautiful model Bavana here, freezing her bottom off. Uh, it's what, 20 degrees out here. We're gonna try to quickly get a nice shot that shows portraiture on a wide angle lens, in this case, a 17 millimeter lens. I'm using both the shift function to minimize the distortion on the bridge, as well as the tilt function to have just her face in focus with parts of the bridge and the skyline in the background. So here's a frame right here. I'm gonna double check and punch in to make sure that her face is totally in focus. Very critical focus, this is where live view really sings again. Here we go. So in this last example, we're gonna use a 90 millimeter tilt shift lens. I don't really use this lens that often in terms of architecture or landscapes, but for portraiture, I do use it quite a bit. It's a really nice creative effect, especially when you use a tilt function. You can actually keep a small part of the subject in focus, in this case, just the eyes. We're gonna go ahead and shoot this vertically for a nice headshot portrait of Avani. We're gonna go ahead and compose her here right with the Brooklyn Bridge in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this up and down. And I see if I tilt up, for me, the top is way too out of focus. So I'm gonna go ahead and tilt down so that the top is a little more in focus and the bottom part of the frame really blooms up nicely. Go ahead and punch in right here with the live view and obtain really critical focus with the 10 times magnification. Make sure just the eyes are perfectly in focus. That's awesome. And go ahead and fire up a few frames. Here we go. Really nice, okay? Okay, great.